Testing, testing, testing. Microphone on. Microphone on. What's up everyone welcome back today we're gonna do a little geared loadout video for you guys for a, a one night backpacking trip coming up katie myself and bernie we're gonna do a one night backpacking trip with possible chance of rain so we're not sure if it's gonna rain or not yet tentatively this gear loadout is based on a clear weather so we're gonna show you the gear we're gonna bring with us to the backpacking trip we're gonna show you an order of how we load it into our backpacks so let's get right to it first of all we have our backpacks so I have the Gregory Denali 100 it's a 100 liter backpack it's basically my go-to backpack for backpacking trips because I uh, will bring a lot of stuff as you will see throughout this loadout the things I need to bring not just for backpacking, but also for uh, creating these videos. Mine is also a Gregory. It's a Diva 60 liters. It's maroon, as you can see, with purple accents. It's really nice. It's the only backpack I've ever had, so I like it. And I think it's a perfect size for me. I think it's a small size. How tall are you? 5'6". I believe when I was trying it on at REI, they said I was right between a small and a medium. And so I went with this one because it just fit better. Because you also got to remember, it's not just your height, it's also the length of your torso. So you can be tall with a short torso or you can be short with a long torso. Um, the reason for the torso size they have to measure out is because of your hip and your shoulder. You want to make sure there's those points of contact with the shoulder strap and your hip belt to distribute the weight and carry the weight around. Uh, you don't want to have it be too uh, shoulder heavy where all the contact is on your shoulder because then that'll be too much weight right here. Well, nor do you want it to be just mainly on your hips. Uh, you want it to be distributed throughout those two points. So the first thing we're going to load in there, sleeping bags. So I got my 15 degree down sleeping bag from Mountain Hardware. So that's the first thing I'm going to load in there. This is the carry sack that it came with. With this bag, it comes with a comp compression sack. So what I'll do is, is I'll take this bag out and what some people will do is just stuff the bag without a compression sack at the bottom of the backpack. But what I like to do is I just like to throw it into the compression sack and throw it in there. So that's my uh, sleeping bag. You know, I sleep warm so it's been good. I've used it all the way down to like zero degrees and it's still been fine for me. So that's my bag. And this is mine and it's the Her Ratio one. Also 15 degrees, it's a light blue with neon green accents and it's really cute, I like it a lot. Like he said, some people like to just stuff it in and that's that's what I like to do. I don't use the compression sack, so I like to just stuff it in at the bottom and then it's just easier to get out for me when I'm there, so that's what I do. Yep. So when you pack your bags, you also want to make sure bottom of the bag has the lighter weights. Uh, lighter weight components in there and then as you put stuff in the bag uh, the heavier stuff is at the top and towards the center of the bag uh, you don't want the heavier stuff to be on sides of the backpack because you don't want to pull on either side so you want to be in the middle right up against your spine towards the top so what we're how we're going to load this up is the bottom stuff that we're initially putting into the backpack it's going to be light and it's going to be the lighter stuff and as we get towards the top it's going to be either the heavier things or we need to act or things we need to access immediately for me the next thing i'll put into my backpack is i'll have this uh sea summit event dry bag and what i'll do is i'll fill it with um either like an extra dry wool sock um like a pack towel so i'll put like something like this uh, my luxury item for backpacking actually and i'll throw it into the bag compress it down and then put it on top of the sleeping bag I have clothes that I was going to bring, like an extra sports bra because depending on how far we go because we don't know where we're going exactly yet, I will sweat and I don't want to have a wet sports bra on when I get to camp or to sleep in so I'll bring an extra one of those. Extra socks, wool socks, these are smart wool. I'll just have my one pair of leggings that I already am camp um, hiking in and I'll wear that the next day because it's just one night and same thing with the shirt. Yeah, if it was two nights or more, we would pack a few more things into our clothing pack. But since it's only one night, we are just packing so that when we go in, if we're, if there's some sweat or whatnot, then we'll just switch it out. So the next thing I'll put on top of the clothing bag is my sleeping pad. This is the Big Agnes Air Ultra, Aircore Ultra. This used to be Katie's sleeping air pad. 
but I swapped it out with what I had here. This one is the Sea to Summit Comfort Light Insulated Pad. So the Sea to Summit, this is the uh, the Comfort Light Ultralight Sleep Air Pad. This has a higher R value than this Aircore Ultra by uh, Big Agnes. So what happened was this is still insulated, but it has a lower R value. And because of that, the capabilities against colder weather is not as good as this one. So what happened was when we went to our recent trip to Arizona and we camped out there, I was sleeping on this and Katie was sleeping on this, but it reached to zero degrees Fahrenheit over there. And she felt cold spots on this air mat, on this air pad. So we ended up swapping it out. And so now she's using this. And when we did swap it out, she didn't feel the cold spots anymore. But I started feeling the cold spots on here, but I have a higher tolerance to cold. So what I'm planning to do is, is I'm going to use this air pad, which is, it's good. I, I think it's comfortable. So this is the Thermarest Z-Lite air pad. Uh, as many of you may know, this is the accordion foam pad. And this side is definitely uh, more insulated. It'll help with insulation. So I'll lay this out and then I'll put this air pad on top and it will definitely help keep warm. And although this weekend's backpacking trip probably isn't gonna get too cold, I still appreciate having the warmer one just in case, just cause I get colder than he does, so I'm happy. That's actually a thinner height after it's blown up than the Big Agnes actually. Big Agnes is more thicker, but that's still comfortable. Yeah, it's very though, yeah, the way it's built. Um, my next item is the Cocoon Ultralight Aircore Travel Pillow, medium size. I used to have a different pillow. It was a Trekology, but it deflated on me after a couple uses, so I got this one. And I really like this one. It's very comfortable. One side is like a nice plush material, and the other side is more like cool to the touch, like the bag. I like having those options of flipping in if I wanted to, if I get hot or cold, and it doesn't deflate on me. And it's very comfortable, and I like it. For me, um, what I'll do is, is instead of uh, using a pillow, I'll use the stuff sack that I have filled with clothes. So if I swap out my socks or whatever. So for me, instead of a pillow, I use this uh, stuff sack. So it'll have clothes in here. I'll kind of loosen up a little so it's not as tight. So it's loosened up a little so it's more uh, plush. And now I use this as a pillow. So I don't need to bring a separate pillow and it works just fine. The next thing I'll put on top is my stove set. The Optimus Crux Light. So it has 16 ounce pot and you've seen it on my other gear loadout video and there's a little mini pot on top of that and then it does come with a stove that I'll be using here and then of course we'll made it with a canister. So on top of that I'll put my food. So what we're going to do is we're going to hike in in the afternoon. So we'll probably have a late breakfast and we'll probably eat a good amount and then after it digests a little, we're gonna hike in and then we're gonna have dinner. So dinner is gonna be, for me, it's gonna be lasagna, mountain house meal. And doing? mine is beef stroganoff, which is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so we're gonna have that for dinner and then the next morning I'll have uh, granola with milk and blueberries. You just add cold water on here and it's super convenient. You don't need to heat up the water or anything like that. So for my coffee, I have the uh, Starbucks, the pumpkin spice latte. This is leftover from a few months ago, but I love it. It's my favorite. Um, just a pro tip too on these Mountain House meals. They're, they say they're two servings or two and a half servings, but unless you're like not that hungry, I would say get one for yourself. Because especially after working out and uh, hiking in, you know, you, you're really hungry. So I can eat the, a whole thing by myself. Yeah, we've um, come to realize over time that even though it's just two servings, it's not. And it's more like one good serving. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're using these uh, plastic spoons we just got at REI. Uh, they've worked good so far. Yep. This GSI is, Outdoors. Yeah, GSI Outdoors. And uh, yeah, it works pretty good. We like these because these are the long handles. And for Mountain House meals, you definitely want to get the long handle spoons because you want to uh, have it dig down deep without getting your fingers dirty. Because some of this, some of the uh, the spoons or the sparks that are made for camping are shorter, so you realize you have to dig in and then it gets your fingers dirty. It's just more convenient. So along with the food and the coffee, I have my coffee cup. Uh, I really like it. It's very convenient. Inside of it, you can measure. There's measuring um, lines in there to tell you not, you know, how much 
uh, like two cups, 16 ounces, eight ounces is a cup and stuff like that. And it's very easy to wash. It's good, like you put hot stuff in there and your hand doesn't get burnt or anything like that. Yeah, um, it's called GSI Outdoors as well. So same thing as the spoon. Yeah, good stuff. So for me, because I do uh, create some content, I do carry certain additional items uh, to put into the main pack. These are the items that I'm putting towards the top because I want to get easy, quick access to them. I am going to carry extra camera batteries. Now, if it's going to rain, I am not going to bring this, but if it's the weather shows that it's going to be clear, I am going to bring uh, a drone. And then here are the additional drone batteries, which the drone also sucks up a lot of energy, a lot of batteries. So I have three batteries for this drone. Uh, this is the Mavic Air and it had my, the controller, the drone batteries and everything like that is in this bag. So I'm going to put that on top as well, on the top side of the backpack. Normal backpackers who don't create videos or anything like that or film videos don't need to bring this additional stuff. This is just stuff that I need to bring and I don't mind bringing. So this is my toiletry bag that I bring. I have extra contacts just in case I lose them or they get torn or something. And then I also have my pee funnel, which is very useful. So what this is good for is if you have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night or really at any point and it's either raining or freezing out and you don't want to get out of the tent, you just use this and you pee into a bottle and it's really, really like a game changer. It's so much more convenient to just stay warm and stay safe in your tent and just still be able to go to the bathroom. So I like it a lot. So what we'll probably do is big, bring like a big two liter or one liter smart water bottle. Yeah. Go to town in there. Yeah, it's, I like it. It might sound weird, but it's really, really convenient to have it. Okay, now for my backpack, the way it's made, I have side compartments and I'll show you what I'm gonna put in the side compartments. So for the first side compartment, I'm gonna put this, which is also my toiletry bag, I guess you can call it. So it has a hand sanitizer. The great thing about hand sanitizer is that not only is it cleaning your hands, <clears throat> but you can also use it to help with fire. It's flammable. And then I do have these uh, Bar D biodegradable wipes. We had three packs of these and we've already gone through two and they're uh, pretty convenient. They smell really good too, I like them. Yeah, they smell good. Uh, there's 10 large and thick body wipes in here. And the cool thing about this is that uh, you can actually rip them into smaller pieces and use them. And there is tea tree oil and aloe vera in here as well into the impregnated into the wipes. So these are undergoing testing right now. So I will give you an update during this, uh, the backpacking trip. I will tell you, and I will actually show you how we, how we've been using these. And yeah, these are pretty awesome wipes. I am going to uh, bring my water filtration system. This is the Kated Iron Hiker Pro. So this is the pump filter. Yeah, we'll show you that in the backpacking trip as well, how we use this. So on the other side of the backpack on the side pockets, I'll have my fire kit and in the fire kit, I have a lighter, a ferro rod. Then I did just recently acquire quick fire. So these are just like little pouches like this. It's 100% waterproof, 30 year shelf life, non-toxic, food safe, and burns for up to 10 minutes at over 750 degrees Fahrenheit. So I was curious about that. I saw this at, um, at the local store, so I figured I'd give it a shot and I'm gonna bring a few of these and, and try. Whether it rains or not, I'm gonna test these out. And then I do have stormproof matches as well. Um, I know a lot of people don't use a chair and they think it's too much weight to carry, but this is one thing that makes my camping experience better because I'd rather sit on this and be comfortable rather than sitting on the ground or whatever. So I bring this, it matches my backpack and I love it. And I'm bringing one too for my bag. Obviously it's comfortable to sit down in around a fire or whatever. But when you're not using it, sometimes what we'll do is we'll put it inside the vestibule for our tent mm -hmm. and we'll use it to um, hold some things off the ground, whether it's the water filtration kit or whatever. It's just random things we'll put on the chair so it's off the ground or not inside our tent or whatever, just left outside, inside on top of the chair. And you'll see that in the trip as well because we'll do that. Put on the lid of my backpack, I am going to put a first aid kit. Now this looks like a pretty big first aid kit because it is a big first aid kit. You don't need one this big but I like to carry a lot of things in terms of first aid. So there's bandages, gauze, um, medication, things like that in here. And this one uh, is not that heavy for me. Luckily, we haven't had to use it, but this is like one of those things you bring hoping that you don't have to use it. But if you need it, then 
it's there. And then also what I'll carry on the top hood is uh, my headlamp. I have the same headlamp. Mine is black and gray. I really like it because the brightest setting is way brighter than my previous headlamp. It was just never bright enough for me. I couldn't, I didn't like it. So we are bringing our tent. For this trip, we are gonna bring the Opalus 3. Uh, you've seen me, you've seen my reviews on the Opalus 3. If you haven't, I'll put the end card up in one of the corners here. Um, my review on this tent, it's an awesome tent. Vestibule space is enormous. A lot of decent space inside the inner tent as well. Uh, this is a three person tent. And how we'll probably carry this is, Katie is going to carry the poles. I usually always carry the poles, no matter what tent we bring. Yeah. And then I'll carry this, uh, the tent on top. On my backpack, the tent is the last thing that I will uh, put on it because usually when we get to camp, it's the first thing that we set up. When we go to our campsite, the first thing we'll do is, is set up our shelter because this is our shelter, it needs to be the first thing we can access aside from the medical kit, which is on the hood cover or something like that. So uh, this is gonna be at the top and then Katie usually puts that on the side of her backpack. Yeah, either the side or you know where the hood, you unclip the hood and then you have the drawstring, I'll usually put it there. Because we're in the Pacific Northwest, winter season is over and things are starting to thaw out and it's spring, we are backpacking around bear country and, and mountain lions and cougars. So for me, I like to carry, I have a concealed carry, which I will bring here. So I will carry this pack, it's a chest rig by the Hill People Gear. What I have here is so there's a Leatherman here, I'll probably not carry this, but so there is a SE Azula 2 at the bottom. And then in this, I will have my sidearm, the Springfield XDM 10 millimeter, and I do have a little flashlight attachment to the side, in the front. Yeah, I'll go more into that on a separate video as far as what I carry in here and, and all that. But as far as right now, what I can just basically say is, there's the uh, sidearm in here, there's an extra magazine, and the knife at the bottom. For right now, that's all I have in here, and that should be sufficient for this trip. So I am gonna bring the Laplander to saw small pieces of wood. I don't think we're gonna make this like a huge campfire night, so I'm gonna bring a smaller saw. Sometimes I bring the bigger saw if I wanna process uh, more bigger wood, but for this trip coming up, we're gonna take it easy and uh, just have like a smaller fire. So I'll have this and then, uh, most likely I will bring like an SC6 to chop the wood as well. Katie is gonna, because I have my 10 millimeter with me, Katie is also gonna carry the bear spray with her. Of course, the last resort is the firearm or the sidearm that we wanna use. And first thing we wanna do if we do have a bear encounter is make a lot of noise, uh, stand our ground of course, because there's a lot of black bears here and do that. If that doesn't work, this is gonna be our second line of defense. Unfortunately, it's just a reality. No one wants to hurt the animals, but you gotta protect yourself if you're in that situation. Yeah. On top of that, we are gonna carry smart water. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we are gonna, we'll put the weight of our, each of our packs at the bottom right here. So her pack is gonna be, and my pack is gonna be. So like I said, um, different people hike their own hikes. Some people like to go really light. Some people don't mind carrying additional items for comfort. For us, because it's gonna be a relatively short hike between three to five miles, and it's for only one night, um, we're just gonna pack more for comfort. Um, I'm also gonna bring my raincoat just in case, so I always put that on top as well. Like I said, under my hood, I'll put it, I'll strap it in there just in case I need that while we hike if it starts raining. But this is our first backpacking trip of the spring season, and we're very excited to go. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't rain. But if it rains, we're still gonna go. Mm -hmm. But like I said, certain things I won't bring. Like I won't bring the drone. I'm still gonna bring the camera. So watch out for that video. We are gonna have that released in a few weeks. Well, it's gonna be fun because now Bernie's more grown up and more mature and more well behaved. <laughs> he's still a freaking brat and he doesn't listen sometimes, but he's much more well behaved than he was before when we first took him backpacking. It's gonna be an interesting trip with him as well. If you have any questions about the gear loadout, Feel free to put a question down in the comment section below. Always any comments or questions are much appreciated. I love reading all of them. Hit like if you like the video. It definitely helps support the channel just by liking the video, believe it or not. Anything you wanna say? I just feel blessed and then lucky to be able to go on these trips together. 
and if there are other couples out there that like to do outdoors activities shout out to y'all and leave a comment and i hope everyone stays safe and has a good week yeah so if you haven't subscribed already subscribe by the way um some people have left comments saying that they haven't seen notifications come when i release my videos it's because you got to hit that bell button next to the subscription button so if you haven't done that please do that as well so anyways uh thanks for watching again be safe, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye!